Hello, Danny here from Euro Retro Gamer, and it is finally here. The public beta for Project Lunar is finally live. It took a while to be published, but but compared to the PlayStation Classic launch of BleemSync, it is, seems to be a really complete package and really functional hack. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can hack your Mega Drive Mini and add additional games to it. The first thing we need to do is download the software that's available on Mod My Classic. Go to the Project Looter page, scroll down until you find the download link for your either a 32-bit or a 64-bit version of the application. You will then download an MSI file and with that file you can install the software on your computer. I've already installed it so it's kind of useless to do it again but it's like installing every other program it's it's fairly simple just a few clicks and you will be up and running now we're going to use this software to install a driver on mega drive mini and add the games to the mega drive mini and before we start be sure that you don't have the mega drive mini connected to your pc but you have a usb cable that can transfer files ready to go now start the application and click on install it will try and find the Mega Drive Mini, but it won't find it because we didn't connect it yet. In a short while, it will prompt you that it can't find the Mega Drive Mini. And if you want assistance with installing the driver on the Mega Drive Mini, we say yes, and we want to use the wizard as well. And it will start a wizard screen. There are five easy steps that you need to follow. First, remove all the cables. We already did that. Then put the power switch in the on position. The third step is that you need to hold down the reset button. And now you have to plug in the USB cable in your Mega Drive Mini that is already connected to your PC. But be sure to use a USB cable that is able to transfer files from one place to the other. And the power LED on your Mega Drive Mini should be flashing by now. And when it stops flashing and stays red, then you can release the reset button. It will now install the driver on your Mega Drive Mini. And this is a process that can take a little bit of time. Um, it says about 10 minutes. Uh, when I run this process again on my Mega Drive Mini, it said I already installed it, so I couldn't go further. So that's okay. Get a cup of coffee and wait until it's finished. Your Mega Drive Mini is now ready to get extra games installed on it. And we do that by using the Game Manager. The Game Manager is a very nicely designed little application uh, which can use to add the games. First off, you probably have to sync up your Mega Drive Mini with your uh, image on your computer. Uh, on the bottom right there's a button you can use to sync up and what I should also recommend you to do is use uh, the menu item tools advanced and back up your current image you can always fall back on that image so that's really convenient and now we go to the simple process to add a game I got the SD card from my EverDrive but you probably have to find them somewhere on the internet if you don't have them. But Google Mega Drive ROMs or Genesis ROMs and you should be fine. Let's start with Art and Senna's Super Monaco Grand Prix 2. And just click the ROM and then you have to scrape the images and information. You can use two platforms but I'll choose the default one and get the contents. Here you can see the different languages and versions that are available. I choose the Japanese versions because I have a Japanese Mega Drive Mini. So th that's it, the game's added. So let's do another one. Let's do Captain America and the Avengers. Again, we can get the information, and uh, there's no Japanese version, 
I'll take the European version. There you go. There's some variant covers, but I'll choose this one and click on add game and it's right in there. So that's not a lot of hassle. I'll fast forward to adding some more games. For demonstration purposes, I installed about 20 games. The last thing you need to do is sync the image you created on your hard disk to the Mega Drive Mini. Click on the sync button and it will upload the files to your system. As you can see, there's around 145 megabytes of space to install ROM, so you cannot install a complete set or anything. It will probably be somewhere around 125 games. Now we have synced up the Mini, it is time to check it out and hook it up to a capture card. The first thing you will see after booting is this new boot menu. And you can change some settings by pressing the B button, but I won't dive too deep in that for now. Because I'm not going to use RetroArch on this one. And here we have the games. And as you can see, uh, all the ROMs that I added to the system are available. This is Sami 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 or Fireshark that I selected here. And let's browse around for a bit to see all the games we have added. And let's play some Eastwatt. Eastwatt. This seems to run great. Um, I did run into some games that did not run, but I didn't check if they were running on my effort drive to begin with. Yeah, this looks great. Let's try another game. Let's go for Streets of Rage 3. One thing I did want to tell you that I noticed is that the games that were originally on there, if you have any save games for those games, they will be kept on the system. So when you uninstall the hack, those save games will be there. But all the other settings will be set to factory settings. So that's a little bit weird, but the um, save games are there. So that's, that's a good sign. I've got all my Castlevania Bloodline saves. A little pro tip, behind this box there's a extra life hidden. This is also in Streets of Rage 2. But this looks uh, great as well, so no hiccups here. So that will conclude this quick install guide. Uh, I try to keep it quick and smooth as possible. I don't want to have a really elaborate deep dive into the, the installation process because it's so simple and it is functional as it is. There are a lot of settings available and for those you have to go back to the boot menu and start the set. Hit the B button for the settings of the Project Lunar settings and you can toggle the splash screen all together and you have a couple of other options you can, can toggle. I didn't mess around with that too much because I just wanted to have the games on there and not much else. But there's all kind of uh, RAM and uh, memory optimization options there. So this will conclude this video. I hope it's useful and I hope you stick around for my other videos. And if so, please like and subscribe and see you around. Bye bye.